All right, I want to do uh, some follow-ups on a couple of these comments. First of all, I appreciate the correction here by BRL. The word is pronounced in iniquity. Iniquity. I can't s say words, but um, n equity is a completely different word. The word in equity or e iniquity is spelled correctly but that is not the correct word in passage but he shall say I tell you I know you not whence ye are depart from me all ye workers of an of iniquity I'm not sure if I'm saying anything right but let's if we could do this here um, you know just go uh, oops there we go and with the E in equity lack of fairness or justice that's not the right word the right word is iniquity I'm, I can't say words man I don't know nothing immoral or grossly unfair behavior and so that's the point that I was making in this video in in Matthew 7 verses 21 through 24 whatever they are that when it talks about have have we not uh, prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then Jesus will uh, turn to them and say depart from me I never you workers of inequity I never knew you um, the, all these those three things that meant are mentioned prophesying in the name of Jesus casting out devils in the name of Jesus and doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus those are not immoral grossly unfair behaviors they're very good very moral behaviors the problem is in Matthew 7 is that they do not trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and the work that he has done those people are trusting in themselves that's why you see this uh, people that are constantly warning others about those that preach against once saved always saved those that uh, preach against eternal security if you do not have eternal security you you can't have peace it's impossible to have peace man you're in trouble and you're not going to be able to save yourself man and that's what those of us that are saved realize that we can't do it ourselves we need a savior we're far from perfect those that reject once saved always saved they pose themselves as though they never sin they're perfect they're as pure as the driven snow and in fact if they were being honest they would just flat out say they don't need Jesus Christ because they are sinless don't need them don't need somebody to pay for my sins because I do not sin well you're lying so right there is a sin so you're in big trouble okay and the thoughts of foolishness is sin and there's probably not a more foolish thought than believing that you don't sin all right and then I wanted to. Uh, Kevin has a Kevin Boutwell has a follow-up comment here. This is good stuff here. It's a good conversation to have. He says to answer your question, I'm not Catholic or tied to them in any way. I don't know the necessity of, of that unless you're you know pretending or deceiving. That's look. This is me and my. Um, experience uh, dealing with people uh, I'm not accusing you of anything I'm just saying I'm suspicious when people say oh I'm I used to be like you or I'm I'm like you and you know prefacing what they're about to say as though they're on my side or they used to be on my side that sort of thing um, and I'm look we're gonna go over this okay the Catholic Church will never be a way of salvation, but is not Mystery Babylon. All right, so uh, there's a problem right there. 
Okay, and we'll go into that. All things must line up in Revelation 17, and verse 9 doesn't. All right, we're going to go over that. The city must be located on seven legitimate mountains. All right, legitimate, legitimate mountains. That comes from your imagination. Just keep that in mind, which Rome doesn't. Its highest hill is 249 feet. That's your standard, not the Bible's. Keep that in mind. What's interesting is, until about 1950, the United States, and I believe the United Kingdom, designated a mountain to be a summit over 1,000 feet. Magically, they dropped this designation about the same time Israel became a nation. Jerusalem sits on seven mountains, all over 1,000 feet. It's also where the prophets were killed and is known today in the word as spiritual Sodom in Egypt. All right, so I'm not going to disagree with the last about the last half of this. Okay, I'm not saying you're wrong at all. The problem is uh, the standard you're putting on the seven hills. So let's go, oops, so let's just do this, I guess. Uh, seven hills of Rome. All right, do we need to get more into this? Do we have to break it down and try to examine it to a point to where we no longer believe? what Revelation 17 says. You're trying awfully hard, trying awfully hard to legitimize the Roman Catholic Church. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Maybe you, you've heard the phrase, the old phrase, all roads lead to Rome. All right, so, uh, you know, I've heard this. Well, there's seven hills here, and there's seven hills there, and there's seven hills right over there, and yonder, and so on and so forth. Well, you're making a big deal out of this and ignoring everything else. It's incredible. This, it actually fits. That actually fits, and that's, to me, that's never been the eye-opener, you know. That's never been the aha moment. The aha moment is, uh, in my mind, in my experience, uh, learning the Word of God, is the, the four beasts of Daniel, and realizing that Daniel leaves out the fourth beast he never mentions it by name and then connecting the, the dot by reading the new testament and realizing the roman empire ruled the world at that time and uh if the idea that the roman empire came to an end would then therefore suggest the end of the world came because Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And the world has not come to an end. And so one of the things that really opened the eyes for me is um, this right here, verse 8. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. This doesn't fit America. This doesn't fit Jerusalem. And it can only fit the Roman Catholic Church because it has to be directly tied to the Roman Empire. Has to be. You can't get around that. Because the Roman Empire was by default the fourth beast of Daniel and very clearly they've transitioned themselves into the Roman Catholic Church and tried to sort of uh, what do you call that usurp or, or just take over and dominate the Christian Church and they've been at it for a very long time 
and then it goes into seven kings five are fallen one is and the other's not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short space this is clearly talking about a succession of popes and by all by every Catholic account they claim that Peter is the successor of Jesus Christ and that the popes are the successors in line with Peter who they claim is the successor of Jesus Christ and that's not found anywhere in the Bible and is it Matthew 16 or Matthew 18 I can't remember nothing come on let's take a look at that one verse it's 16 I knew it I knew it verse in Matthew 16 um, what's going on here in Matthew 16 um, Jesus asked his disciples this question whom do men say that I am whom do men say that I the son of man am and they said some say that art John the Baptist some Elias others Jeremiah or one of the prophets and he saith unto them but whom say ye that I am and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God now Catholics will make this out as though Jesus is turning to Peter and saying that you are the rock and I will build my church on you and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and so the idea is that Jesus is giving Peter the power of God Almighty and then there and then the the theory is that Peter gives it to the next Pope and the next Pope and so on and so forth the problem is and this is a big one just a few verses later he turned and said unto Peter get thee behind me Satan thou art an offense unto me now we got a big big time problem we have to then go back and re-examine what Jesus says up here first of all Peter says thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven so the father God Almighty revealed it to Peter that Jesus is the Christ the son of the living God yeah that's right you got it buddy now and I say unto thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it now this is crucial when Jesus says to Peter or when he says yeah when he says to Peter thou thou art Peter and upon this rock what rock is he talking about is he talking about Peter being the rock or is he talking about the fact that Jesus is the Christ the son of the living God this is absolutely critical if you're a Catholic you're gonna say Peter's the rock if you're a, a true born-again Christian man of God you know and fully understand full well that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the Living God the rock is built on Jesus Christ not on Peter that's the that's a huge difference because if you understand that then that completely destroys the Roman Catholic Church 
all right, without deceiving you on this one particular issue. If they can deceive you on this, they got you. But if they can't deceive you on this, then you ought to be able to know full well that the Roman Catholic Church is a fraud. It's phony. It's set up to deceive people from its very beginning, from its very foundation. The Roman Catholic Church was never a Christian church. Not at any time. And the popes that call themselves Holy Father, they are presenting themselves as if they are God Almighty. And that's the warnings that were given in Daniel and in the New Testament that the Antichrist will present. And you hear all kinds of teachers even proclaiming this, that the Antichrist will proclaim to be God Almighty. Well, <laughs> it's right there in front of your face, man. The Pope means, literally means, Holy Father. And the Holy Father is God Almighty. And if that wasn't enough, you see verses like, call no man father. Call no man father. But every single Catholic priest in the world is called father. You've heard of Father Sarducci? Right? To me, that's the best. To father Sarducci is the best example of a Catholic that you'll ever see, in my opinion. Jesus says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. So, begs the question. Why do Catholic priests want you to call them Father? Because they want you to view them as God, which is in heaven. And it's unbelievable because we hear or we read uh, Paul and Daniel talk about, oh, talking about, um, this Antichrist, the fourth, as Daniel talks about it, uh, the Antichrist will present them as themselves as God and magnify himself above every God. So the Pope, being God Almighty, magnifies himself above every God. They even call themselves the Mother Church. Now, and then we can go, uh, what is that, Thess Second Thessalonians, if I'm remembering right, I can't remember nothing. Uh, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, though, so that he as Pope sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God the Holy Father is God Almighty and that's what the Pope means and you see here in Matthew 16 that the church is not built on Peter it's built on the Lord Jesus Christ that's very important very crucial very critical to understand and if, if you had any doubts if you're unsure you're still learning I get it 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4 and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ not Peter that rock is Christ so the church is built on the fact the rock that Jesus is the Christ the son of the living God not on Peter whom Jesus called a few verses later Satan so we can therefore conclude that the Roman Catholic Church is built on Satan and does the Bible support that yes it does let's go to um, what is that verse the oh, revelation I look behind that's not it and the beast which I saw and the dragon gave him, the dragon is the devil and Satan, gives his power to the beast, and the beast is the Roman Catholic Church. So the Roman Catholic Church gets all its power from the devil. All right. 
And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. So the Roman Catholic Church has the full power of Satan working in them. And it's amazing because they look exactly like Christians. And I saw her and I wondered with great admiration. It's incredible, really. How they copy themselves to look just like us. But they are not of us at all. And of course, when you read Mystery, Babylon the Great, you ought to know this is directly connected to the what Daniel talks about in the four beasts until the end of the world. And so the fourth beast is in the same spirit as the first beast. That's why we it says uh, Mystery, Babylon the Great, and it says uh, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, right? I mean, this is this isn't Jerusalem. This isn't the United States. This is the woman, which is a religion that copies itself to present itself to look like a Christian religion, and they are not. All right, so, and then there's more I wanted to go over. Let me, let me go back here. Oh, the seven hills, okay. And so, let's go back to Revelation 17, the seven hills. I mean, there's so much going on here in Revelation 17. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing, really. And, of course, uh, let's see. The, now, he, Kevin brings up some good stuff here at the end about spiritual Sodom in Egypt. And... Uh, Let's see, I'm, you know, Jerusalem sits on seven mounts, doesn't matter. Uh, you, people are making too big of a deal of that. And of course, if you are um, Catholic, you want to, you want to uh, try to confuse the subject as much as possible. Who is the Antichrist? I'm not sure if this is the question I want to ask. Alright. But let's just take a look. Because of their height. Heinous current. Nero. Isn't that interesting? You hear people talk about, oh, that the Antichrist is already fulfilled. It's already happened. You don't even have to worry about it no more. The Antichrist. It's, pre, you know, preterism. It's already happened. Don't worry about it. Don't read the Bible. Just watch your HBO and forget about it. So, uh, <laughs> but amid all the speculation about the Antichrist, much of it wild and fanciful, what do we really know about the figure? Very little. Ooh, buddy, that's got to be, you're the greatest religion in the world and you don't know squat about the Antichrist. Isn't that something? Huh? You want to make this as, as uh, you know, confusing and muddled as possible because the obviousness of it is that the Pope is the Antichrist. He's always been the Antichrist and the Catholic Church is fully aware of all those that know it and realize it and preach it and they can't come up with a counter argument at all other than to say Ah, we don't really know anything about the Antichrist. Even though the Protestants, those of us that are born of God, we know full well that the Pope is the Antichrist. No question about it. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, as though he is God. God. No, what was that verse? I kind of screwed that one up, didn't I? Showing himself that he is God. This is the Pope. This is, I mean, you could, you could really do a full-on study. And I want to get to, I think...
that verse right there, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwells between the cherubims. O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kings of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Let's just see here if I can find something here that might the Pope sitting between the cherubims on his throne presenting himself as though he is God Almighty O Lord of hosts God of Israel that dwelleth between the cherubims Thou art God. Thou art God, the cherubims, the Pope. Is that, the, is that God Almighty? You telling me this guy's not presenting himself as God Almighty? Arrayed in purple and scarlet? You telling me right there the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet you telling me this guy is not presenting himself as God Almighty I we just went over Matthew 16 is this the successor of Jesus Christ is Peter the successor of Jesus Christ it really is very absolutely critical all right and then all these other verses are just as amazing and incredible as verse 10 okay and the fact that these guys they have been making war against the people of God since its conception all right and there's one more point I want to make here maybe two more points first of all uh, you know remember remember the 5th of November they tried to kill King James tried to prevent the King James Bible from being, you know, to try to prevent King James from translating the Bible into the English language, and then they hung and killed William Tyndale, and then burned his body because he was translating the Bible into the English language. And this is just one example of many. All right, but it go, I want to go sort of touch on this idea that oh, it's Jerusalem. That's not the Pope. It, you know, it's anything but the Pope. You know, this it, it, people do teach this. I get it, and it's, and it's hard to discern the truth, and it takes away. I struggled with it for a long time myself, until I could no longer deny that everything written about the wickedness, the wicked one, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, the great whore. It's can you connect all the dots? And it's talking about one man in one entity. And that's the Pope in Rome. All right. And then, of course, I want to go in this on this. So, uh, the idea that there, uh, the idea that, that it's Jerusalem, there is no king of Jerusalem, if you will, that fits Revelation 17. Not even close. And in fact, we read in the New Testament exactly how those Jews view um, the idea of a king. All right, right there it is. John 19, 15, but they cried out, away with him, away with him. Talking about Jesus, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests, which are the Jews, said, We have no king but Caesar. Caesar is the Roman emperor. And today, there is no Roman emperor. There is the Pope. And the Pope is the Roman emperor of today. It transitioned, the Roman Empire transitioned from a physical empire and 
into a spiritual empire. It's obvious as it gets. But you have to, first of all, be born of God. You have to believe the Bible you hold in your hands. You have to have faith. And eventually the truth will come to you. And it'll take, it took me a while. It might take you a while. We're all learning. We're all growing. I get it. All right, but we can be confident in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of God that all these things will be known to us and that we will continue to grow every single day. And we have nothing at all to fear or to be afraid of. Right? And I don't want nobody to be afraid of nothing. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. And of course being confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in you. Will perform it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. All right. Trust in the Lord. Once saved, always saved. Now I appreciate that comment, Kevin. I hope I can help you. I understand I'm not going to change anybody's mind. I just want to show you the truth and let the seeds of truth work in you if you are certainly driven by the truth. You desire the truth above all else. I have absolute confidence you're eventually going to come see this. All right, and you're going to you're going to have your understanding of of why people are teaching these other things that are that would by default dismiss the pope as the antichrist. So that's all the Catholic Church can do is try to confuse the subject. They can't give you a straight answer because the straight answer points right at them. So the only thing they have left is to confuse the subject. And we see, it's incredible, isn't it? All, and all of a sudden we see all these different theories and ideas that point away from the Pope. And it makes you wonder, where are these theories when you hear pe people preaching this stuff and preaching anything but the Pope? It kind of makes you wonder, who are they in league with? Now, I'm not going to accuse anybody, but it, the Bible is very clear that in the last days there will be deceivers and uh, people being deceived. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So you, these people, in my mind, they're not intentionally deceiving, but they are themselves deceived. There aren't people out there that know the truth and then are, you know, trying to dis trying to trick people. It's people that are deceived themselves that are deceiving others because they don't want to believe the the truth. And that's just the world we live in, and it's amazing that anybody gets saved in today's world with all the deception that is in the world today. It's incredible. If anybody's able to see the truth, the truth is harder and harder to see each and every day as we get closer to the end of the world. And yeah, that I don't want to get into that, but I fully and abortion is murder. Let's just end it on that, okay? And um, I Look, when women have abortions, uh, nobody wants to talk about it, and they should. But they deal with that for the rest of their lives, knowing that they killed their child. As a teenager, most of them, they kill their own child, and it's sad. Truly sad. So anyways, I appreciate all these comments. Uh, good stuff. Appreciate them. Keep them coming. If you have follow-ups, Kevin, and if I've been unfair or too hard let me know that too so I don't want to be too hard and I certainly don't want to be unfair alright thanks again